Hello, welcome back. This is part two. Wait a couple uh, minutes, about two, two or three minutes until super glue dries. And then you're just going to whip finish off this 70 near 60 thread. Because the next step, we're going to spin deer hair. You can spin with this thread, but I don't like to. I like to go to a larger thread size. This is a 3 or 140 denier black thread. You can use Kevlar. You could use some fancy spinning thread, but I don't want to. Since you just attached a thread, you're just going to put a dab of super glue right on it. Wait a couple seconds. And then you're going to grab your spinning hair. This is a section of spinning hair. That, uh, this is from a deer that I shot. This is from the leg. doesn't matter what type of hair. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, matters what type of hair you use. Um, you just want some type of deer hair. I mean, you got to use deer hair. You should use natural. You could use dyed. But all the different types, the coastal, the regular, it, it doesn't really matter. You could buy it or you can shoot it like I did. I'm just stacking those tips right now. You could even use an elk hair or, uh, let's see, what else is there? Use elk. I don't know if moose would be good. I always try. Okay, I have the tips. The tips should extend about halfway down the body. Brush out any of that under fur that you didn't get when you first tried it. Do two wraps. And then just do a couple more. Let it spin. If you noticed, any hair didn't get on my far side. I want a fairly thick collar, so I didn't let it spin quite as much as I could have. Now I'm going to grab just a little more hair, and we're going to stack the tips again. If you don't want to use deer hair, you could uh, make the body longer and just take a, your same hackle and hackle the head. But well, that would work because you have a foam body. If I like deer hair, makes I think it makes a very good head. Or you could try folding foam. It's all different. There's a lot of great recipes on YouTube and in books that don't use deer hair that produce very good hopper patterns so not limited just tie that in I'm just going to go in front all these butts this is when I'm going to tie in more deer hair and this I'm not going to stack um, I'm just going to scrape out the under fur I'm doing this over my trash, not doing it over the camera. I don't want my uh, floor covered in deer hair. And when you trim this, then you should probably do it over the trash too. So just spin that. Two bundles of hair, fair sized hair, you know, pencil width, should cover the whole head. Um, Next, you're just going to wet finish. I'm only going to do two whip finishes on this one because I don't want the head too big. 
then just break off your thread. Okay, next you're going to grab different scissors. You could use, well actually, never mind. I was going to suggest grabbing like razor blade scissors or a razor blade, but you can do this perfectly fine with just your regular scissors. I'm going to take this out of the vise, like so. You can see. I'm going to make my first cut, make a flat bottom. I'm going to do this over the trash, and I'll come right back. This is the flat cut. I actually made two cuts. I made one here and the one further back to tidy up a little. Okay, you can see how this looks. Yeah, just a sec. You're giving it a little haircut now. Okay. Next, you're just gonna come in on top and start trimming outwards. Make my first cut like so. Made it right there. You can see that. I'm gonna go off to one side. And make my other cut. And I'm making sort of like a cone. I'll go off to the other side. And make that cut. I'm making like a half circle. Uh, not a cone. Make the other cut. You can see this is still sort of rough, um, but it'll do. Next, I'm just going to trim up the front, not the back. Just concentrate on one area. I trim that up right there. Next, I'm going to trim up the back. All this, actually, I won't do it in front of the camera. Um, just going to trim off the back on either side, the top and the bottom if I missed any. And now I have my rough shape. This will do. However, I like to give it a little more of a haircut. Um, I'm just going to go down on an angle and just trim around the collar. <sighs> Making sort of a little pitch design. Um, like so. Next, I'm just going to make sure my sides are even. On the bottom, you can sort of see that. I'm just going to trim the thread, or the deer hair, real short where the eye of the hook is. It's important to make easy threading of your line. Okay? Next, you have a fully Next, well, you're done. No more steps. You have a fully trimmed and fully functional hopper. Great for trout, bass, panfish. I've, I've got just about everything on this hopper. You could variate the colors. You can use turkey win to imitate a lighter colored win instead of the tail. You can use darker deer hair. You can use dyed. I've tied these in all of dyed deer hair. I've also done like green and orange. I've also done black to imitate somewhat of a cricket design. You can tie these larger or smaller. In my opinion, it's not really worth it to tie it larger because this is about as large as a hopper's gonna get. However, there's a lot of hoppers smaller than this. You can tie this in a size 12 or 14. Some great trout fly, some great trout hoppers, or even a size 16. You have to consider all these options. Very good little pattern. Give you a quick view. Yeah. Give you a front and a back view. This is the front view. This is the back view. Side. This is what the fish is going to see. looks just like a hopper. Thanks for joining me. This is another great fly. And uh, see you in the water.